Do you know where the compass needle points today? It turns out that over the 2,000 years of the device's existence, it has always set a different direction. Can we trust it now? And why do Google and Apple have to change their maps? And where will the North Pole be in 10,000 years? It's believed that the first compass was invented in China between the 2nd century BC and 1st century AD. Even then, scientists noticed that the magnetic needle always pointed in the same direction. Since then, the compass has been a constant companion of travelers. If you ask a person who's unfamiliar with geography, where does the compass needle point? They will most likely answer toward the North Pole. This answer is wrong. The geographic North Pole is the point of intersection of the axis of Earth's rotation with its surface. However, there's also a magnetic north to which the compass needle points. The magnetic North Pole is hundreds of kilometers away from the geographic North Pole, and it's constantly drifting. The reason lies inside the Earth. Our planet consists of several layers. The mantle lays under the crust of the Earth, and a red-hot core is in the very center. The Earth's core consists of two parts. A solid inner core, compressed under the pressure of two million atmospheres, and mainly containing iron. And a molten outer part, which is very unpredictable. The molten iron and nickel is constantly in motion. The huge temperature difference between the Earth's mantle and the solid inner core leads to the fact that convective flows occur inside this hot underground ocean. It's because of this that our planet has a sufficiently powerful magnetic field. The Earth's magnetosphere extends about 70,000 kilometers, or 43,500 miles, deep into outer space. Thanks to this phenomenon, our planet is reliably protected from solar wind and other deadly cosmic radiation. In addition, it was the presence of a magnetic field that allowed people to create such an important navigation device as the compass. Earth's magnetosphere also has an axis. The northern end of the axis is called the North Magnetic Pole. The compass needle points directly at it. By the way, if scientific accuracy is observed, the magnetic south pole is located in the northern hemisphere, and the magnetic north pole is located in the southern hemisphere. However, in order to avoid confusion, scientists turned a blind eye to the laws of physics and decided to call the pole that is now in the northern hemisphere the north magnetic pole. So, where's this place located? And where will a traveler end up if he keeps walking while following the compass to the north? Back in the 11th century, the Chinese philosopher and astronomer Shen Kuo drew attention to the fact that in some places the compass doesn't always point exactly to the north. The difference between the geographical and magnetic poles was called magnetic declination. After this discovery, more accurate navigation charts were used by sailors and travelers. Later, in 1634, English mathematician Henry Gellibrand discovered that the magnetic declination changes over time, and hence the location of the magnetic pole moves. The exact coordinates of the North Magnetic Pole were determined in 1831. At that time, it was located at Cape Adelaide Regina on the Boothia Peninsula in the Canadian Arctic Archipelago. However, by 1904, a new expedition noticed that the magnetic pole had shifted north by several tens of kilometers or miles. Five more subsequent expeditions took place in search of the magnetic north pole. And every time, this important point was in a new place. The north magnetic pole has been near Canada for the last 400 years. The axis of the magnetic field is constantly shifting faster by the day. For example, in 2007, the distance between the geographic and magnetic poles was approximately 700 kilometers or 435 miles. And in 2019, according to estimates by the U.S. National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, it decreased to only 390 kilometers or approximately 242 miles. 
The North Magnetic Pole is currently drifting towards Siberia at a speed of approximately 50 kilometers or 31 miles per year. That is, on average, every day, the pole moves more than 136 meters or 446 feet. The people of Canada are upset about this phenomenon the most. From about the end of the 16th century, they could consider themselves owners of the North Pole. But in 2005, Larry Newitt, head of the Natural Resources Canada Geomagnetic Laboratory, recognized that the magnetic pole had left Canada and today is located outside its territorial waters. So, where's the pole heading? The magnetic field of our planet is the result of the rotation of the liquid outer core of the Earth around a solid inner core. The rotation speed, intensity, and direction of convective flows in the outer core cannot yet be accurately predicted by scientists. The second reason for the displacement of the magnetic pole is the rotation of the planet around its axis. Because of this rotation, the liquid mass in the center of the Earth is twisted into a corkscrew or spiral by inertia, like a spring. French geophysicist Julien Aubert in 2019 suggested that with the help of a supercomputer, in the near future, scientists will be able to create a simulator to model the currents in the depths of our planet and thus calculate the further shift of the magnetic pole. Yet, regular changes in the Earth's magnetic field, its intensity and polarity have yet to be clearly identified. Observations of its previous trajectory of movement only approximately indicate that the magnetic pole is drifting in the direction of Siberia and may reach it by the year 2050. If we assume that neither the direction nor the speed of the travel of the North Magnetic Pole changes, Russia will become its next owner, or the residents of the Tymir Peninsula will, to be exact. By the way, the magnetic South Pole is also drifting, but at a much lower speed. The reason why the South Pole is more stable than the North is not known yet. French researchers, led by Francois Petrellis, have suggested that it occurs due to the larger land area in the Northern Hemisphere. It turns out that the greater the area of the continents that lie in one of the hemispheres of the Earth, the more often its magnetic field changes direction. On the contrary, if the continents are located symmetrically relative to the equator, then the magnetic field would remain stable for millions of years. The acceleration of the drift of Earth's magnetic axis poses a problem for space technology and transport. For example, runways at airports are designated according to their magnetic azimuth. These numbers now have to be changed. The same goes for navigation programs. For example, Apple and Google are already working on updating their mapping applications to indicate the precise direction. However, this isn't the worst problem that humanity can face. From time to time, the magnetic inversion of poles happens on Earth. The poles switch places. Inversion has happened about 100 times over the past 160 million years. Presently, the Earth's magnetic field is gradually weakening. Its strength is decreasing by about 5% every 100 years. According to scientists, this is a sign of another inversion. So, what threat does it pose? Under the Cluster 2 satellite system, a project of the European Space Agency, it was found that the magnetic field accelerates oxygen ions and emits them into outer space. Thus, with further weakening of the magnetosphere, the oxygen content in the atmosphere may slightly increase. However, the rate of scientific progress gives us peace of mind. Mankind will certainly figure out how to adapt to the new environment, no matter what happens with the magnetic poles. In the meantime, keep in mind that the compass still doesn't show us the exact direction of the geographic pole, but only approximately helps us to determine the cardinal points. This doesn't mean you can no longer take it with you on a hike. The error in measuring the route remains minimal, Unless, of course, we're talking about a trip in the middle or tropical latitudes and not about a major polar expedition. So, 
where do you think the North Pole will be in 10,000 years? And will compasses even work by then? Write your answer in the comments to this video, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to learn more about our planet. Until next time.